Good morning, guys. What are you doing? It is early in the morning and I am heading out to do my chores. Although we are going to the garden. You know, it's been way too hot to function lately, but I can still say this garden looks pretty darn good. I've had a pretty busy week and I've got a big weekend for working. Today we have an 80s party at work and I'm gonna dress up and I am so excited. And I was thinking I probably won't get out here the rest of this weekend to do a video. So I wanted to bring you along this morning while I had time and show you what's still alive <laughs> after this brutal summer. <coughs> These girls have been getting out every day and they absolutely love it. <laughs> so here we got some okra in this first bed that is killing it. It looks so good. Look how big these plants are. They're probably about waist height to me. And then this tomato plant, and I do not know what it is, but it is glorious. This is, well, there's two plants here, but this largest mass right here is just one, some sort of heirloom tomato. It's, it's definitely not like the hybrids like the Estiva or the Grand Marshal that I had. This is obviously an heirloom tomato. And yesterday I found this tag right here for a giant crimson. I don't think that means this is necessarily the giant crimson because I just drop tags all the time. But it's also not the German pink tomato that I had and it's not the yellow heirloom tomato that I had. So I think it is the giant crimson. And it is so healthy. I'm absolutely gonna just let one of these tomatoes get completely ripe on the vine and then save seeds because it has bypassed all of the disease that the rest of my tomatoes succumbed to this summer. And it kept producing fruit this whole last month when it's been over 100 degrees. I think it's a giant crimson and it is absolutely performing here. <laughs> My asparagus or yard long beans are also doing great. I'm still getting a harvest off of them every day. The purple hole pink eye cow peas have all, um, they're about done. I've pulled all of the dried pods off of them. And because I only had a few plants in these one by fours, I didn't get a whole lot of harvest. Definitely not enough to actually like put away and save. It was maybe enough peas for one meal. So what I did was just let the the pods dry on the vine. Spider webs. And I just saved all of the seeds and I'm going to sow heavily next year to get an even bigger harvest. That's what I do when I don't get a whole lot of beans off of a crop. I will just let the seeds dry and save them um, for next year and use them as seed. This first row of tomatoes, they're all still alive. I've got some disease on this German pink. Um, and it's it's continuing to put off fruit, but look how tiny these are. This is a little, little tiny tomato. Um, and so it's setting fruit, but in this heat, it's just setting really small fruit. Look at how, look at how cute this is. And it, it's looking worse for wear than the rest of my tomatoes. The healthiest looking one here is the chocolate pear tomato which is this one right here. And then I have the Mexico midget over here, which is also succumbing to some disease. And my wonderful trellis of Armenian cucumbers is halfway gone. After the squash bugs took all my squash, they moved on to the Armenian cucumber plant. So I've already pulled out one side that has died and the other one, they just migrated over to the other side of the trellis and they are killing it. That's fine. I have like 15 Armenian cucumbers in the house I still haven't used. So I'm okay with that plant being done for the season. But with this dying Armenian cucumber, I've still got a harvest of cow peas to come in here. They're starting to come in a bit. This soil just isn't very good and they are moving very slowly. But that, that will be remedied over the years as I continue to add soil to this area. For now, this is a fine little harvest. I'm picking fresh green beans off every day, and hopefully I can get some seed out of this and keep this going because these are already saved seeds from my cow peas last year. But the star of the show performing right now are the peppers. 
in this heat they just really take off and produce me a ton of fruit and I've even got habanadas starting to ripen which I'm very excited about I have not eaten one of these yet I want them to be fully ripe so I can get the full experience because I'm incredibly excited to taste this pepper but you can see it here especially with the peppers um, all of this this tall growth right here this is all new growth that came up with the summer heat and as I've said on a previous video the peppers will just take off in our summer heat 110 killing tomatoes left and right but these peppers absolutely love it as long as they get water they do not mind the temperature at all these peppers are the same and these are tall they're they're about as tall as my chest in this raised bed but I'm still pulling peppers off every day and I'm almost got full harvest of green chilies coming in these might be red chilies I honestly do not know I so upset that I didn't label anything. Well, that's not true. I labeled everything and then I just lost the labels. I need to find a better way to label my plants because I do this every year. Here was the tomato bed that I had a ton of disease in. I had to rip out a lot of them. Uh, this one is a seedling that I bought, the German Queen. It has not, it's been setting blossoms, but I've had a lot of blossom drop because of the heat. You see right here. The blossoms just fall off because it's just too hot for them to produce fruit like this so it's still growing and i might get fruit later on when the temperatures cool down but for now i haven't pulled anything off this plant but these guys are huge <laughs> they're all the way at the top of the shade cloth and i'm still getting fruit off of this one this is an estiva tomato so this this one right here is a german pink but this one over here that I'm pulling fruit off regularly is an Estiva F1 hybrid. And this Estiva has done really well for me. I'm, I'm not going to save any seeds from it because it is a hybrid. I still have seeds left over in the packet. But I will absolutely plant this one next year because it has continued to set fruit for me all through the heat of the summer and ripen that fruit. The size hasn't changed much. Like the, the German pink sizes are really tiny little tomatoes in this heat. Granted, it's still setting fruit, which is nice, but if the fruit is only bite-sized, well. And my in-ground garden bed is looking rather abysmal. We had uh, some heavy winds the other day, which knocked over a lot of this corn. But I also did not plant this corn like I should have, so I had very poor um, germination on my corn cobs. So corn is wind pollinated and you really need to plant them close together so that all of those kernels within the corn cob get pollinated and turn into the corn kernels. I knew that when I planted these, I just wanted to see if I could grow them because these are the seeds from goingtoseed.org and they did beautifully, they grew great. I mean, this guy's taller than I am, but because they were planted so far apart, I just had really poor germination in these cobs. And I can pull one off and show it to you guys. So here's one of the corn cobs and look how tiny it is. It's very, very thin. And I've been opening a few of these up <laughs> and they're not bad. Um, I've taken a bite of the few kernels that I could eat and it tastes delicious and, and the plants grew very well. But this is what's gonna happen when your corn doesn't fully pollinate like it's supposed to. <laughs> is you have a few kernels. This is where these specific kernels got pollinated and the rest of this is just flat and non-existent. <laughs> so these are pretty much useless. <laughs> See all of these hairs out, that come out of the top of a, of a corn cob, these match with a specific kernel in the corn. So every single one of these hairs has to get pollinated by the tops of other corn to produce a fully functional corn cob, which I don't have. But, mm, it's so sweet. The few kernels I do have are great. <laughs> so I've just been tossing these to the chickens and it's fine. I'm actually gonna let a few of these harden in the garden, like dry out, and I'm gonna save the kernels for next year and see if we can do better. I should, I should have just planted it better, but Honestly, halfway through spring, I was just throwing seeds all willy-nilly. So I'm not upset about it. And then the chickens love it. 
And it's proof that I can grow corn because I have failed <laughs> every other year at growing corn. And did you guys also know that corn silk is medicinal? <laughs> so you don't want the super dried, gross, sun bleached parts of the corn silk. Um, but corn silk, if you like make a tincture stuff out of it, it's actually really good for urinary tract health. Uh, it could be used as a medicine if you have like um, a UTI or something. So I might harvest some of this corn silk off these corn cobs and make myself a tincture. And if I do that, I will absolutely bring you guys along. Here at the back of the in-ground garden bed, if you remember, I had a few more sunflower plants. I actually took them out yesterday. They were dying and I've already pulled my seeds from them. So I just pulled them out to get some breathing room in here. And I'm starting to pull up grass and just prepare this area for fall planting. As you guys know, I've already started my seeds for the fall. I've got more heat tolerant brassicas and everything in the grow room in the house. And those are doing just fine and they're little baby seedlings now. But I'm thinking that round of cool weather crops is going to go here in the in-ground garden since I don't have anything planted there right now. And I have way too much planted in here to have space for them. But all in all, despite the heat, the garden is doing swimmingly. Um, much better than I thought it would. There were a couple things for a while there it was touch and go. A lot of my tomato plants were just having a terrible time. <laughs> but they made it through and although we haven't really gotten any cooler, we're still hot. Uh, the days have been cloudier. See, here in the desert when it's hot and dry you can look up in the sky and it's completely cloudless. <laughs> But technically we're coming into our monsoon season, although we haven't gotten any rain yet. And there's just been a lot of cloud cover lately, especially in the afternoons. So that's helped cool it off a little and the slightest alleviation in temperature just does absolute wonders for these plants. So hopefully everything makes it through and fingers crossed we get some rain here in the future. I'm not sure what's going to happen. This has been a crazy summer. <laughs> and it's just so hot. <laughs> but everything is alive, and I'm still pulling out okra and beans and tomatoes and peppers almost every day, which is awesome. I will take anything that the garden wants to give me. And frankly, if it wants to peter out, I don't blame it, <laughs> because so do I. <laughs> it's just, you can't do anything from like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm inside. <laughs> And I'm saving a ton of seeds because all of these plants that are just rocking it through this heat, just keep saving your seeds every year and you're gonna get a hardy plant that does super well in your area. Yay. So I'm very excited. All right, I've gotta feed these chickens. They are loud and annoying. <laughs> They're just going after that corn cob I threw them. But thank you guys for coming along on this quick little vlog today. Hush, I'm making a video. I will catch y'all in the next one.